Oh, sweet home Chicago. Oh, my goodness. Democrats are not ready for Chicago. And I am very proud of a lot of people who are going to make the Democratic Convention perhaps maybe a very interesting event to cover. Now, Hard Lens Media, we are going to be covering this event. But in order for us to really find out just what is happening, there has been an ongoing uh, movement and a collaboration of many groups coming together, getting ready to call out Biden, the Democrats, and their hypocrisy. Most notably, uh, how tensions are rising over Israel and what is happening there, of course, the genocide in Gaza. So let's go and pull up this article here. Democrat tensions over Israel threatened to boil over at Chicago Convention. So the debate within the Democratic Party over Israel could come to head this summer as its convention as it faces significant inter interparty divide on how to approach the ongoing conflict. Well, you would think after seeing men, women, and children getting blown up, run over by tanks, getting shot at, getting, you know, starving to death, you would think like the human heart of, of these politicians would, would grow or at least have some action into it. But then again, none of these politicians are human. They're not human. They're not. None, no one. Not, none of them are. This isn't open for a debate. Members of the party, critical of U.S. support of Israel amid its war with Hamas, have rallied around a movement to buck President Biden in the Democratic primaries and vote uncommitted. Stay uncommitted, folks. You don't owe the... Joe Biden has made it very clear, all right? He he knew in October, his administration knew in October that the IDF was bombing civilian residential homes, community centers, hospitals, universities, places of worship, refugee centers. He knew, okay? He, he doesn't hear you. He forgot about you in more ways than one. The movement has been seen uh, has seen moderate success and attained some delegates to be sent to the convention, which will be held in Chicago in August. Remain uncommitted. If you are who you say you are, my respect for you will grow. But if I see everybody cuck and bend over backwards for the Democrats once again, anyone associated with the Democratic Party is uh, a lemming. Some Democrats are concerned that divisions on display will just grow worse ahead of the quadrennial process of approving a party's official platform this summer. What, what What is Biden's policy? I'm OK with genocide. That's what he's saying. I do think after the convention for sure, I would be really surprised if there weren't significant protests on the issue. And unfortunately, I don't think there's a lot that Biden can do between now and then to change that, said Heather Gutney, a member of the 2020 Democratic Platform Drafting Committee. Hey, that's probably one of the big brain people who decided eh, you don't have to follow through with progressive policies. Each party drafts its platform every four years ahead of the nominating conventions after its extensive process to set its policies on all key issues facing the country. In 2020, then candidate Biden and Bernie Sanders agreed to form a series of task forces to bridge the divide between the two factions of the Democratic Party following a serious primary battle between the two of them. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Let's have democracy in the chat. How was that uh, task force to unite the left and Democrats? Type one for Kit, it worked. And Bernie was being pragmatic. Awful man. Type two, it didn't work. And it convinced us that not only is Bernie Sanders a nutless cuck wonder, but the fact that also they were never going to fight for progressive policy in the first place. They were never going to do it. That task force sucked dick. I wonder how many twos look in the chat. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. From the task force that developed policy positions on the most critical issues, the Democratic National Committee created a drafting committee co composed of some of Biden and Sanders supporters to draft the exact language of the platform. The committee was mostly comprised of Biden supporters. Jeez, wow. But Sanders supporters did make up a decent sized minority, which means zero. Zero is a number. The committee held a few public hearings uh, featuring testimony on its proposal and eventually submitted the platform to the DNC for final approval at the convention. And Bernie got nothing. Bernie got nothing. He's he's a cuck. He's a cuck. He's a cuck. But let's go ahead and talk about the rise of these protesters because this happened over the weekend. And there's a growing movement. And I don't want to acknowledge who they are. This is called March on the DNC 2024. March on the DNC convention. We are a coalition of organizations planning to bring our demands to the Democratic Convention uh, 2024. Chicago, join us. And this is a Twitter organization. And I've actually interviewed a few people here. So, so, again, save the date. Join us in bringing our demands to the Democratic National Convention. And these are many people who are trying to, again, call out the Democratic Party, the DNC. And it's one thing to protest. However, folks, just so you all know, that the protests, 
and the protesters are right now in a federal lawsuit against the city because the city is making sure that many of these protesters and groups are out of sight and out of mind. However, that's not going to silence their voices. To liberate ourselves, we need to care about freedom everywhere, not just the injustices that show up on our front doorstep. Otherwise, we all will face the threat of the same injustice. That's right. We will continue to resist in solidarity with the people of Palestine, just as they stood in solidarity with us during the Ferguson uprising and the George Floyd rebellion. That's right. And we will continue to stand in solidarity with all of our neighbors overseas because we will never be free until all of us are free. Committee of Chicago, we denounce the gross misuse of our tax dollars to build weapons of war crimes. Mm -hmm. We are committed to opposing the fueling of the U.S. imperialist war machine that is heavily funding and directly involved in the ongoing genocide in Gaza. And we are committed to ending the forever war perpetuated by U.S. war profiteers. Tell them, comrade. Tell them. Right, let's go. We continue to be committed to marching rallying and fighting alongside our Muslim, Arab, and allied comrades in the Coalition of Justice in Palestine. And I would like to thank the people united against oppression for organizing and inviting me to speak at this event. Peace be with you all, peace be to the martyrs, and complete liberation of Palestine. Let's go! Now, y'all might remember her. We actually interviewed her on the show when the DNC, uh, we had a few organizers who are part of that lawsuit against the D uh, city of Chicago. Uh, by the way, I've saw in the chat, some people are saying that the free speech area will be set in all the way in Skokie, Illinois. That's how far the Democrats want. <laughs> no, that's, that's a joke. But it wouldn't surprise me if the Democrats want the protesters 10 miles away from the DNC convention. And it's going to be held at two different places, the McCormick Place as well as at the United Center. Let's play this video here. Why we must continue to disrupt and agitate. And even though Joe Biden hasn't taken any action for an immediate ceasefire, the statement still signifies the results of our pressure. In fact, on Monday, Joe Biden will be back in Chicago. I recall this past November when Joe Biden came, we made it very clear he was not welcome in our city. That's right. Clearly he hasn't gotten the point. So we needed to be out here on Monday to make sure it's clear. No genocide, Joe, in Chicago. Yeah. And there's more, much more. I want to give these protesters a chance to speak out. So a showdown is coming here in Chicago as well. Because that idiot, Joe Biden, decided to bring his convention to the city with the largest Palestinian population. Yeah! Yes! We're going to give him a proper greeting. Yes, we will. And we're going to say to him, Joe Biden, you can't hide. We, we charge, charge you with genocide. Joe Biden, you, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. Joe Biden, you can't hide. We charge you with genocide. With genocide. We charge you with genocide. Now, of course, corporate media, being who they are, they're still afraid and they're going to start challenging more people out here. But this right here is a prime example of what the Democrats are ignoring. Now, we wonder why people are protesting people like Nancy or Biden or Hill Dog. I mean, Hillary Clinton. Listen to this video here. Wisconsin is obviously a key battleground state, as you just suggested. New polling from The Wall Street Journal shows Trump and Biden tied uh, in a head to head matchup there. What do you say to critics who say this may cause this movement that may uh, force people to sit out may cost President Biden his reelection and by extension of his loss, the demise of American democracy with the reelection of Donald Trump? 
Yeah, well, we would say that um, the Biden administration ignoring a majority of voters that call for an immediate and permanent ceasefire, ignoring a clear warning sign six months in advance of the November election that voters demand an end to the war in Gaza and an end to military funding to Israel um, in order to impose that ceasefire, um, ignoring that is risking our democracy. This is the White House putting the Netanyahu far right wing administration regime really um, ahead of um, Americans, American interests and our democracy when a majority of voters are saying that enough is enough. This is not what it looks like to secure freedom, dignity, uh, and justice for everybody. And that's what voters stand for. And that's what people of conscience said on April 2nd when they voted and mass for this um, for uninstructed. But I would also say that, you know, in Wisconsin, the uh, it, it, it's head to head every time um, the, the vote, uh, the electorate in Wisconsin often determines the election as goes Wisconsin, so goes the country. Um, and that is because the coalition of voters that need to be brought to the table, um, the multi uh, racial, multi uh, ethnic, multi generational coalitions. I also want to acknowledge a few people in the chat. Look, bad cookies, and I agree. You have no idea how bad uh, those idiots piss me off. They refuse to take accountability for voting for Biden. They still say Trump would be would be worse. Are they serious? Uh, no, they're not serious people. And I want to just remove the video here for a second. Uh, these people who are so afraid and triggered by Donald Trump, they live in their own reality. And in many ways, secretly, they probably are just like Donald Trump. Or wish they were, or they're either that they're able to put on a mask because Donald Trump reveals a, a lot, or either that triggers people in certain ways. And many of these people who suffer from Trump derangement syndrome are probably, in many ways, politically aligned with Trump. They just, they just will never say it out loud because they're part of certain social groups or in positions of power. But you know, that's that's the neoliberal for you. They're the fox in the hen hound, okay, or in, in the hen house, okay? So there you go. And many activists and organizers, especially those that are going to be rallying against the DNC, I encourage all these groups to follow through with your commitment. Follow through with your commitment and don't get bullied by the Democratic establishment. And beware, beware of infiltrators. Because we've seen this before. I have seen this way too many times where many groups that have been critical of the Democratic Party, many groups that have called out the Democratic establishment, uh, slowly get infiltrated, and then, surprise, surprise, they're telling people to vote Democrats during the uh, general election, be it a presidential election cycle, or for a midterm election cycle. I, I had a viewer recently reach out to me, hey, Kit, you know, this article is from 2023, but, you know, it would be great to see independent media outlets like yourself cover the fact that DSA is losing membership and that they're part of the Democratic Party. And uh, actually, we do have two videos that we did cover last year calling out the fact that the DSA is losing membership and that they have voted to be part and remain a wing of the Democratic Party. So to all these groups, you got to keep your head on a swivel. The Democratic Party, with their decisions, with their influence, uh, with APAC and other pro-Israeli groups and the military-industrial complex, Big Pharma, the prison-industrial complex, all of that, you have to remember that they are bought, they are owned, and they are given a script to convince voters to get once again suckered in into voting for the Democratic Party because apparently what? Trump's the bad guy? I remember people saying in 2020 Trump was going to lead us to World War III, that there was going to be economic instability, that there was going to be a crisis at the border, that women will not will lose the right to choose, that our infrastructure is going to fall apart. Everything's going to go to hell. But no, that didn't happen. See, Trump didn't get elected in 2020, but Biden did. And all of that happened under Biden. And yet I don't see those latte drinking liberals out there anywhere. But they're going to tell people to organize and protest if Trump gets into office. They're going to tell all of you to waste your time and protest in front of Trump Tower. Remember who brought us here in the first place. It wasn't Trump. It was the Democrats. And just to really trigger the Hillary Clinton supporters, never forget that Bill and Hillary encouraged Trump to run in 2016. Let's go ahead and play the rest of this video. That secure the uh, vote in Wisconsin. Less than one percent of the vote determines the uh, a win in Wisconsin. So we don't need delegates at the DNC. We just need 
we just needed 20,000 people to show up and we had more than double that. So I think the, the ball is squarely in the Biden administration's court to respond to voters, to listen to voters who've made their voices heard for policy change and who've made it clear that their mission is not about political figures. They are Democrats within his party, his constituents who are calling for him to finally make a change towards permanent um, and lasting peace in the region. That ain't happening. I'll tell you why. Numerous congressional Democrats have called for placing conditions on additional aid to Israel, depending on protecting civilians and allowing humanitarian relief to get through. The internal divisions facing the party could present a difficult challenge for crafting an official policy acceptable across the spectrum of Democrats. The 2020 Democratic platform declared the party's commitment to Israel's security. Wow! Who knew? That means Bernie the Cuck Sanders gave that a thumbs up and right to defend itself while calling for a two-state solution to the conflict and recognizing the worth of every Israeli and every Palestinian. Oh, my heart. Isn't it so wonderful? Those are such great, wonderful words to be part of the word salad. It also stated that the party was opposed to any unilateral steps by either side to undermine, undermine the prospects for two states. The fact that people in the Democratic Party and people in corporate media keep on promoting a two-state, Netanyahu said that ain't happening. You said it ain't happening, baby. Gottney, the person I referenced earlier in this article, said a 2024 platform may look similar to the 2020 uh, one uh, because Biden has not strayed much from that language, but the focus may be more so on the state of the divide than the platform itself. I don't think we'll focus on the language of the platform, but certainly to, at the convention, I think that's where people are going to express their dissent. And then they're going to hear the dissent and they're going to be like, we hear you. Please be polite. Now shut up and vote Democrat or we will bully you. Jim Zogby. Oh, my, that's a terrible name who has been involved in drafting numerous platforms in the past election, said he is unsure what the platform point on Israel will look like, but expects it will be largely cooked as it usually is on the Middle East. Oh, my goodness. Well, isn't that, isn't that something? Zogby, who is the president of the Arab American Institute, a civil rights advocacy group that advises policies affecting the Arab American community, said the administration has, has not had meetings with the community about policy positions. Uh, he said that they had meetings with the Secretary of State, Antony Blinken, but not the White House. Oh, no, you did speak to the White House. Antony Blinken said no. I'm going to continue to hope to change the policy, change in language, change in. Oh, dude, dude, stop, stop. I'm going to continue to hope to change the policy. Not going to happen. Change the language. Not going to happen. Change in outreach. Not going to happen. A sincere effort to understand what our concerns are. No. And try and accommodate them. No. Look, we're going to get to 40,000 dead Palestinian men, women, and children. It ain't going to happen. Can you get serious for once? Everybody that's trying to hope that Joe Biden's going to have a change of heart. This isn't a Charles Dickens story. Okay. This is a story that even H.P. Lovecraft couldn't comprehend. For Christ's sake, even Kasulu is more compassionate than the Democratic Party, and that's not saying much. These, Anyone that's with the Democratic Party, why are you wasting your time? And at this point, the number of dead men, women, and children in Gaza is far number uh, higher than the number that's being presented to us because we don't really know how bad it's gotten there. But we do know this. Netanyahu said he's going to continue on his military operations. He is not concerned about the threats from the United States because, let's face it, our politicians are bought, including Joe Biden himself. The international community isn't going to do anything. The ICJ isn't going to do anything. Bassem Youssef, unfortunately, is correct. Israel is probably going to get away with this. And 1.5 million refugees are at risk. And so when the DNC convention does come here, to all these activists and organizers, follow through. Follow through is being uncommitted because the Democrats at the city of Chicago made sure they don't want to see you out of sight, out of mind. They don't want to see you anywhere near the convention. They're going to tell you to vote Democrat. They're going to say that they hear you, but it's just a ploy to get you to vote and to get other people to vote Democrat. Stop wasting your time with the Democratic Party. They are not going to convert. They are not going to change. They are not going to listen. They don't stand in solidarity. They just want you to vote against, to vote against Donald Trump, and then that's it. And then Joe Biden's in office again, and nothing will fundamentally change. We here at Hardlands Media are going to be covering the DNC convention here in Chicago. Stay tuned. August 19th through the 22nd, we'll be here. 
Please be sure to subscribe to Hard Lens Media so we can give you guys the updates, and we will we will be on the ground covering that event.